Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I hope whatever time you're watching this, you're having a pretty good day. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the final final paper for this class, and it's going to be due on the final exam day. All of that will come into play here. This is going to be a cause and effect essay. There are 10 possibilities, so I'm not going to be allowing any changes. I think that there should be enough here someplace to make this work. And in fact, in a lot of these options, there's sort of an infinite number of possibilities. We'll talk more about what makes up a cause and effect essay, uh, what kind of arguments go into what are called causal arguments uh, in a future slide, but right now, or future presentation, right now we're just talking about these are the parameters of the essay. Prompt number one, what caused you to become a dog person or a cat person? Or if you like iguanas, what caused you to become an iguana person? And if you are a person who has pet rats, what caused you to become a rat person or whatever kind of person you want to be associated with an animal companion? Think about what does it mean to be a dog person or a, an iguana person or a cat person? And how, what were the, that's the effect. What were the causes that got you there? Number two, how has one of the following helped you become the person you are? You have to start again with the effect. This is who I am. In a lot of ways, you are going to be defining yourself. This is who I am. Did your hometown help you do that? And it doesn't matter whether your hometown is New York City or whether your hometown is Wakanda, South Dakota. Did the size of your graduating class help you do that? And again, I think that if you are in Wakanda and your graduating class was 22, or if you are in uh, New York City and your graduating class was 6,000, or if you are in a major metropolitan area and your graduating class was 100 because you went to a private school, how did any of that help create who you are? And then again, I think one of the ways that we become who we are perhaps is through family income level. Uh, did that help create you? So think about who are you and how did one of these things, what did one of these things do? What were, what causes were created by one of these things that helped make you who you are? Number three lets you take a look at two different kinds of options. You are going to have, the effect is education is boring. What were the causes of students believing that education is boring? And then the next one is the, what's going to happen because students find everything boring. Pick one or the other. Notice the huge capitalized or there, one or the other. You've got a cause of what causes students to believe education is boring, and you've got an effect. Because students believe education is boring, what's going to happen? This is not a research topic. I want you speculating on what is going to happen. Number four. Why is, and insert the name of a video game franchise here, why is this video game franchise popular? All right, the effect is it's popular. What are the causes of its popularity? And again, I don't believe there needs to be any research. Number five is pure speculation. What would happen if a race of benevolent space aliens landed in Yankton, South Dakota? You've got this as the cause. This is the thing that was caused by, you know, this is the cause. What's the effect? What's going to happen if that happens? 
And number six is also speculation. Uh, number six is based kind of on my reading, but it's just kind of based on personal experience as well. Will artificial intelligence, AI, move humanity closer to a dystopia or closer to a utopia? Use your personal experiences with smart devices in your life to support your thesis. In other words, why did you think utopia? Why did you think dystopia? For example, we have an Amazon Alexa in our house. It's great. I can listen to podcasts. I can uh, get the weather. I can, uh, you know, have it uh, pick music off of Amazon. I can use it to order stuff off of Amazon. The thing I probably use it the most for is asking it to spell words for me. And because of that, I'm wondering if I'm not getting a little less intelligent, a little, you know, that certain things that I should be able to know aren't happening as much in my brain as is losing a little bit of elasticity. Okay. I could extend that into saying it's going to make us all stupid. Don't forget, it's not just uh, smart devices like uh, Amazon's Echo or Google Nest. There are smart doorbells. There are smart homes. There are washing machines that you can hook up to the wireless. Uh, there's the uh, vacuum cleaners that kind of function on, a, on an AI. Don't forget that Google's algorithms are all AI. Think about all of those things. Um, as you run through this thing, but what effect will that have on the world at large? Use your personal experiences to support the thesis. Both of my classes, at least as I'm looking at the calendar, uh, have their finals on uh, December 12th. So I'm just going to make this due December 12th at 4.30 p.m. There is no grace period. Remember that this one has to be uploaded to both uh, the Dropbox, which is, I believe, already set up, and to Google Classroom, as have the last few papers. It's a three to four page paper. And again, some of you have been really short here lately on the, the three. You have gotten onto page three, but it's not a full page three. You know, three full pages, please. Uh, use the Google default font. Uh, I've talked ad nauseum, I think, about uh, changing the spacing. Uh, again, just to help me ever so often, and I just use the old uh, prompts here, or the old labels, but your name, which class period you're in, and your title, whatever your title here is uh, from, you know, cat person, dog person, AI, whatever you're going to put in there, just put a little thing up at the top to let me know. Remember that the title is in default font and centered. Uh, there's not an extra double space. It's just normal spacing. Plagiarized work's going to receive a zero. Turn it in in Google Classroom. Will be used to double check everything. Again, I'm using the same rubric. I've talked about the thesis several times. Is there a creative insight? Are you offering something that moves the paper along? Are you providing yourself and your reader a roadmap? All of that becomes part of this. Are you organizing this in a most important to least important? Are you organizing this in a top to bottom? Are you organizing this in some sort of logical fashion that's easy to follow? Claim data warrant. Are you providing enough data? And most of this, again, in the prompt is asking you to provide the data from your personal experience. And are you fixing all of your errors? Are you proofreading? Are you reading from the bottom to the top to catch mistakes? And then a couple of hints here. Think of this paper as a how and a why, not a who or a what. The what's, the causes and effects have been provided for you. How and why are you making the speculations? How and why are you saying that something is a cause or something is an effect? 
And then I think this is an extension of the narrative. Evidence is coming from anecdotes, your personal life, not the research. You're going to have to define dog person. You're going to have to define cat person. You're going to have to define dystopia or utopia uh, in, you know, terms of this essay. You're going to have to define popularity. You're going to have to define almost all of the terms here at some level. And then finally, as we're going through here, correlation does not necessarily mean causation. Make sure that you are making a link, not that two things happened at the same time or relatively the same time, but that one thing is definitely caused or definitely will cause or can cause something else and lead us to the next effect. If you have any questions, remember that we have time in class for that almost every class period. Hope to see you in the next class period, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day.